If you're hoping to get asylum in the United States, but you've been in another country, one that's neither your home country nor the United States, after leaving your homeland, but before entering the United States, well, you'll wanna pay close attention to this video. We're diving into an essential topic, the firm resettlement bar, which, if it applies to you, could prevent you from gaining asylum in the United States. I'm Brian Manning. I used to be an asylum officer with the government, but now, as an asylum lawyer, I help immigrants all over the country to secure their future in America through asylum. Let me know in the comments if you've got an asylum case pending or just now considering applying it. I'd especially like to hear from you if you've been waiting for an asylum interview for multiple years. Okay, so what exactly is this firm resettlement bar? Well, essentially, the US government's stance is that if someone seeking asylum in the United States has had the opportunity to stay indefinitely in another country after fleeing their homeland, well, they should have taken that option. Why should the US extend protection to them when they could have found refuge elsewhere? Now, this is the core principle behind the firm resettlement bar. In legal terms, the firm resettlement bar states that if you've been physically present in a country other than your home country after leaving it, but before coming to the United States, and while you were in that country, you had either permanent residency or were offered it, then you're ineligible for asylum in the United States. Note that being physically present is crucial here. Even a brief stay in another country could invoke this rule. People often find it surprising that even a quick stopover, changing flights, or even just having the plane momentarily on the ground to take on more passengers counts as being physically present in another country, making someone subject to the firm resettlement bar, potentially. So if you came to the United States by means other than a direct flight, then you were physically present in a third country. And that means that you need to go to the second step of the firm resettlement analysis, determining whether you had permanent residence while in that country or an offer to get it. And that may seem straightforward, but the concept of permanent residence can actually be quite nuanced. Different countries may label certain visas or permits or status as permanent residence, but these might not meet the criteria under US immigration laws. And on the other hand, a country might call a certain status something other than permanent residence, like it might make it sound like it's temporary, when it will, in fact, be considered permanent residence for purposes of the firm resettlement bar. So if you're uncertain whether your situation qualifies as permanent residency, then please consult an immigration attorney for advice. Aside from actually having permanent residence, receiving an offer of permanent residence in a third country could also implicate the firm resettlement bar. That's right, if a country offers you permanent residence while you're physically present there, even if you don't accept the offer, you could be barred from gaining asylum in the United States. Now, let's dive into the two exceptions to this bar because importantly, you might be able to get around the firm resettlement bar and still get asylum even though you were physically present in a third country where you had permanent residence or an offer to get it. So the first exception to the firm resettlement bar is known as the restrictive conditions exception. So suppose a third country offers you permanent residence, but they impose numerous restrictions on your living conditions or on your rights. In that case, the US government may consider that it doesn't genuinely qualify as permanent residence, or at least it should not prevent you from seeking asylum in the United States. So, for example, if you're told that you can only reside in certain areas or if you're not permitted to work, well, these are examples of restrictions that could trigger this exception. The second exception to the firm resettlement bar is called the no significant ties exception. If you were in a third country after fleeing your home country, but you did not form meaningful connections there, well, this exception might apply, allowing you to seek asylum in the United States. There are specific conditions to be aware of, however. First, you must have been in that country solely as a result of escaping persecution in your homeland. Like it was a neighboring country and you fled there to escape persecution in your home country. Or maybe it was the only country that you could fly to because you didn't have a visa for any other country. Second, your stay in the third country should be limited to the time required to plan your onward journey. So for example, if you're just in this third country long enough to purchase a plane ticket to the United States, let's say for a day or two, well, that would be considered a reasonable amount of time. Staying a long time or developing significant ties. Like for example, 
getting married or acquiring property while in the third country would disqualify you from benefiting from this exception. So in summary, the firm resettlement bar could block your asylum eligibility if you've been physically present in a third country after fleeing your homeland and before arriving in the United States where you either had permanent residence or were offered it. However, two exceptions, the restrictive conditions exception and the no significant ties exception could provide an avenue for still getting asylum. Now, because this area of law can be really complex, if you think the firm resettlement bar could apply in your case, then it's highly advisable to consult an asylum attorney. They can help you determine whether what you had can be classified as permanent residency or if you might qualify for one of the two exceptions to the firm resettlement bar. If you're ready to take the next step and get help with your asylum case, then please call my office today. That number is 713-909-0401. And remember, we help people all over the country, so it doesn't matter where you live. Call us now to schedule an asylum strategy session so that we can help you secure your future in America through asylum. Again, I'm Brian Manning, and it's an honor to support you in your asylum journey.